uh, in this video lecture i will discuss about the ruby laser its principle construction and working before that uh, I, i had discuss about the uh, main components of the laser and uh, the process basically which take place simultaneously into the laser that is the absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission and then after we had discuss about the einstein coefficient so here i just discussing about the uh, basic principle construction and working of the ruby laser so ruby laser was the first laser that was developed in 1960 in hugues research laboratory by the uh, diod brewery at ted mayman right so it is the first operating laser using three energy level scheme of population inversion and a solid state crystal laser element was used right so you know that there are three components of each laser which plays the role number one is the laser medium and in laser medium you know that from that we decide that which medium we have use so laser medium is what in the ruby laser uh, we use a ruby rod made of the aluminum oxide and second point is about the pumping process through the pumping process we basically excite the atom and achieve the population inversion and number 3 the point is about the resonator cavity resonator cavity is what basically it is an assembly of the two mirrors uh, one is highly reflector and second one is the partially reflector and in between of these two mirrors we keep the laser medium and achieve the population inversion in the laser medium right that material basically from that we get the laser light so these are the three components of each laser so we will discuss about it and now the about the principle as you know that the ruby laser is of three energy levels one is uh, the ground state second uppermost is the excited state and middle one is known as the metastable state so you know that the lifetime of the excited state here this is the excited state and you know the lifetime of the excited state is of the order of 10 raised power minus 8 second right so this is the lifetime of the excited state and the lifetime of the metastable state you know is of the order of 10 raised power minus 3 second so 10 raised power minus 3 second is the lifetime of the metastable state so you can imagine the uh, uh, time difference between these two so the lowest one is the e one you can say this is the first and represent the ground state this is the excited state e2 and the lifetime of that is of the order of 10 raised power minus 8 second and this one is the third one that is known as the metastable state and lifetime of the metastable state is longer as compared to the excited state here five times longer so you can imagine so on the basis of time we will discuss further about the slow transition and fast transition so now the point is how basically uh, the transition take place into the three energy levels all the atoms are supposed into the ground state they are shown by this animation and they absorb the energy right so a three salt frequency radiation they absorb and goes into the excited state that is the e2 state right so here they will stay for only for the 10 raised power minus 8 second and then after they immediately jumps into the metastable state so all these excited atoms basically jumps into the metastable state that lies in between the ground state and excited state lifetime is longer as compared to the excited state so in the first case when the excited atom jumps from the this state to this state that transition will be slower or faster so i am using two type of transition one is slow and second is this is the slow transition or the fast transition 
how to decide it slow transition and fast transition to decide it basically we see the lifetime if lifetime is smaller here in as compared to the meta stable state what will happen all the atoms immediately will jump into the meta stable state and the lifetime of the meta stable state is longer as compared to the excited state so you can imagine that the those atom will stay there longer and comparatively the transition will be slower so this is the meaning of slow transition and fast transition between two different state it basically you decide on the basis of time if time is uh, smaller the transition will be fast if time is longer the transition will be slower right so we have seen this transition here in between the ground state and excited state then second excited state to the meta stable state and now from meta stable state to the ground state and the population inversion basically is achieved in between the two states when we talk about the population inversion here the number of atoms suppose they are n3 and here in ground state if number of atoms are n1 so i am saying that population inversion means number of atoms into the meta stable state are larger as compared to the ground state that is n1 right so population inversion means this one in general what happens the number of atoms in the ground state is more as compared to the excited state but in case of uh, population inversion which is one of the uh, requirement for the laser light what happens that number of atoms in excited state are more er as compared to the ground state so this is the case of population inversion right so here one atom basically goes into the ground state and spontaneously right and that photon sometimes uh, is responsible to induce the other excited atoms right so because of that you will get two photons and further this process is going on and as a result you will get the laser light so here you will see that these atoms comes into the ground state and as a result you observe the emission of the photon all the photons have same frequency and uh, same direction because of that you will get the uh, monochromatic light one wavelength and all the atoms are in same phase so because of that laser light is unidirectional now the second point is about the construction uh, we had discuss about that uh, the lasing medium lasing medium is the ruby road ruby road is made up by the aluminum oxide that is of pink color and we would just mix some impurity into that of the chromium oxide so what happens as you have seen into the p type and n type semiconductor that impurity ion replace the position of the silicon or germanium similarly same thing happens here that chromium ion replace the aluminum atom and acquire the position of the of that right same thing is happening here how much basically we mix the material that is about 0.05% by weight and the second point is this one the cylindrical ruby rod having the dimension of in terms of length 2 cm to the 30 cm and diameter is of the order of 0.5 to 2 cm so this is the diameter and length of the ruby rod is about 2 cm to the 30 cm there are two phases as i told you in the resonator cavity one phase is a uh, completely reflector and second is partial reflector so that is named by a and b and these two faces are completely uh, parallel there is no risk about it they should be 100% parallel to each other and now the third point third point is that uh, ruby rod is arranged at the central axis of the xenon flash 
tube which is in the helical form so at the center of that genon flash lump we lamp we just keep the ruby rod uh, when the flash of the genon light fall on it it absorbs the light and goes into the excited state but the point is the uh, genon flash lamp uh, uh, gives its uh, uh, flash uh, its give flash or its light only for several milliseconds right to pump the chromium atoms and uh, because of that the ruby crystals uh, temperature increases and we keep that uh, system into the liquid nitrogen or just to flow the water to keep it cool now the next point is about uh, same thing working here you know that uh, we use two wavelength uh, from the uh, genon flash light one is uh, green and second is the blue color green color wavelength is about uh, 5500 angstrom this is for green color and for the blue color that is about 4500 angstrom so this is for the blue color right so these two wavelength is absorb absorbed uh, by the uh, ruby rod uh, by the ruby crystal and as a result they goes into the excited state correspond to the e21 and e22 so you can see here this is the ruby rod ruby crystal made up by aluminum oxide in which uh, i said we dopped to mix uh, chromium oxide chromium is responsible for the laser light in ruby laser there are two mirrors one is uh, partially reflector and one is completely uh, reflector and this one is the genon flash lamp and uh, right in the left hand side you can see that this is the perfectly reflector mirror right this is a you can see and the second one this is the b that is partially reflector so when the photon basically strike to these they bounce back and similarly same ha happens at the a so the by this way this made the resonator cavity uh, this is the genon flash lamp this one is the genon flash lamp it is connected with the power supply by this way so when we switch on what happens basically this genon flash lamp provide the light to the ruby rod and as a result ruby crystal absorb the energy and emits the photon by this way and here you can see this is the laser light unidirectional and all the photons have same frequency same direction now because of this flash this ruby rod uh, temperature grows uh, to keep that cool we further keep it in, in a case where we use the nitrogen liquid nitrogen or flow of the cool water to keep it cool right so this is about the construction part of the ruby laser and in the next section we will see properly that uh, how it basically happens so as i told you that uh, there are two wavelengths one is the green and second is uh, or blue correspond to that two photons absorbed by the chromium ions and they goes into the excited state these two excited states of the uh, chromium ion is correspond to e21 and e22 that is about 2 electron volt and 3 electron volt so e21 is ab near about to the 2 electron volt and e22 is near about to the 3 electron volt so these are excited states so chromium ion will no longer stay here more so immediately they will jump into the metastable state and this transition will be radiation less and from here metastable state to the ground state uh, the laser transition basically will take place and from there we will get this 6943 angstrom wavelength so population inversion basically achieved in between the Uh, metastable state and the ground state and the wavelength basically which we observe is of the order of 6943 dark red color 
right so this is the idea of our laser ruby laser now uh, the advantages uses of the ruby laser so main use is in industrial to drill the uh, sharp hole in diamonds because the output of the ruby laser is in terms of the megawatts right and second use is uh, basically uh, this ruby laser is used by the holographers around the world to produce holographic portraits uh, with the ruby laser in size up to a meter square and third one is to making the tattoos and hair removal what is the main disadvantage of the ruby laser the main disadvantage of the ruby laser is this is the pulse laser output comes into the pulse 